Right, so is the Federal Reserve uh, put alive and well, and if so, is that a good thing? Um, spoiler alert, the answer, in my opinion, to the first part of that is very much yes, and the answer to the second part, I think, is probably not. So let me explain each in turn. So we came out of 2018 with the Federal Reserve indicating that it would be willing to raise interest rates probably by another half percent, two quarter point hikes during the course of 2019. And that was despite the fact that uh, President Trump was tweeting away saying that he didn't think that the Fed was doing a good job, that he thought that they should be easing up on rates rather than tightening. And despite the fact that it was very, very clear that there was a, something of an economic slowdown going on with the United States. And yet they plowed ahead. Fast forward to January 2019, and they kind of half reversed on that so-called dovish pivot. It said, well, you know, incoming data looks pretty weak. Well, you know, you know what, Fed, that had been happening for months. Um, and, uh, but, you know, still said, although our policy is totally consistent and so on and so forth. And then we fast forward again to uh, their meeting in March, and they effectively took any rate increase this year off the table while still signaling that perhaps they might be doing in something in uh, 2020 um, and beyond. But the markets obviously by then uh, were smelling a rat. Um, Federal Reserve kind of uh, blew its credibility. We don't know whether or not it's reacted to the, uh, the ongoing pressure from Donald Trump, whether that the, the data actually caused them to have a serious rethink, or whether by um, political pressure or economic ineptitude, the Fed within the space of three months has done uh, a 180, and there's a sneaking suspicion that uh, the Fed is willing to uh, run hot um, on inflation. Certainly, inflationary expectations of the US have come back to more or less where they were in mid-November of last year. So a lot of that, that December shock has really been unwound, and of course, that's been also reflected in equity prices, uh, and we saw that uh, fantastically well-bid um, IPO of Lyft just last, last week. So animal spirits are very much uh, alive and well right at the moment. Um, but, you know, is this a good thing, um, you know, going forward? Yeah, as I say, the, the Fed put is alive and well. Is it a good thing? Well, short term, I guess, yes. If you're long of risk assets, if you're long of stocks, if you're long of growth, if you're long of lift, then, yeah, it's party time is here again. And the fact that something of a Goldilocks scenario is again being priced into um, most financial assets, because stocks have not only done well, but uh, bonds have also done rather well because people have, uh, have been convinced of uh, that, in fact, inflation is perhaps never likely to be a problem in the US. And goodness knows it hasn't really reared its head elsewhere in the global economy. Having said that, we do know that um, prolonged bouts of very, very loose monetary policy, as the US has uh, been pushing for the last decade or so, has allowed uh, accumulation of debt, not only within patches of the corporate landscape within the US, but has also been transmitted elsewhere uh, to other parts of the global economy. We can all look at China, for instance, and say, well, my goodness, they've got a debt problem, but they certainly would not have been able to accumulate debt quite as quickly as they had had other global central banks been quite so easy on policy. So the reason I don't think it's good over the longer term is, is that, uh, of course, it's allowed, as I say, this accumulation of debt uh, in certain places, which at some point is going to be unwound and people are going to lose money there somewhere or other. But also more broadly, that um, the central banks have also dumbed down some of those traditional pricing signals that investors used to rely on to try to work out what would happen next. And not least has actually been uh, the US yield curve, a lot of the talk, recent talk of US recession, which I'd have to say I think is overblown, um, has been caused by this so-called inversion of the US yield curve, depending on how you measure it. But the irony of all of this is to a large extent, the Federal Reserve has themselves uh, actually engineered that through their own flawed forward guidance. So uh, and that's probably one of the reasons why they're keen to, to drop it. So anyway, bottom line, short time, uh, short time good, long time uh, uh, bad. And uh, I guess my overall conclusion is we are well past peak central banker. It's very clear that they don't necessarily know what's going on. And we should perhaps take what they're going to say going forward with a pinch of salt.